Mystical and Otherworldly Beings Part 14, The Extra Dimensional Air Rods. <laughs> now this one is very interesting because this is actually a very recent phenomena. Um, there are reports of these fast moving rods with wings um, that, I mean, people have alleged that they share an existence between our reality and another reality and that they move so fast that human beings can't see them even when they're close by. In fact, the only reason why we know about them is because they move in front of camera lenses and cameras are able to capture them. So when people go back and review the footage, they appear. Now, a lot of people suggest that this is just the act of, you know, a, a fast moving insect in front of the camera lens at a certain angle, which is what they probably are. But I mean, who's to say that um, our little sliver of reality is the only one that contains uh, life in it? I mean, that would be the height of arrogance to say. And a lot of people actually... sometimes when looking at old footage you do kind of see slithers and stuff flying by it kind of resembles that i ain't even gonna lie have anybody else experienced this let me know in the comments and take a look at this. Amazon bringing pay by palm technology to Whole Foods. You guys already know where I'm going with this beast technology. Let's keep reading. Amazon is bringing pay by palm technology to Whole Foods stores. The company announced Thursday that its Amazon One Palm recognition system will soon be in more than 500 Whole Foods stores by the end of the year. So y'all out there thinking about getting that mark of the beast? Is it the mark of the beast? Or at the start of one? Who knows? Or is this a convenient way to pay? your thoughts in the comments. Whole Foods customers who choose to use Amazon One won't need their wallet or a phone to pay. They can simply hover their palm over an Amazon device. Of course, we know why some people aren't on board with it. Now, I want you to clean your ears out and hear me correctly. Do not misconstrue what I'm saying. Revelation 13, 16 says he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads that no one may buy or sell except the one that has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. The false prophet institutes the mark of the beast, not the Antichrist. Point number one. Point number two, even though this is not the mark of the beast, at least right now, it lays the foundation for it. It lays the shadow framework for it. Like the technology is here, but then when the false prophet comes on the scene in the middle of this uh, tribulation, he sees the technology and is like, I'm going to use this. So the fact in the book of Revelation, you can buy or sell with the market's economic, with your hand, now you can buy or sell with your hand. Yet people think the Bible's f yeah. that I always learned that things always start overseas and then they come over here. Like when I was in Germany, like all the fast food restaurants looked all modern, updated, while over here they were still looking all old. Then like three or four years, everybody over here started coming with that modern look to their restaurants. It's crazy how things just slide on down to us.
wear a face mask. Please wear a face mask. Please wear a face mask. Access granted. Damn. Access. I know that's just violating your personal space. Granted. Access granted. I can see 10 years from now, they send you letters in the mail talking about the data and the privacy data been compromised and you might been affected. Access granted. Access granted. Access granted. Access granted. Access granted. Hey, I'm gonna come and I'm bravo, see fish. A day life as Oka, the boy made the square. Hey, it'll be a fish fry that day. I tell you that, I get my grill out, get my apron out. Season up things up, gut them up, and fillet them. Mmm. See, like fish, uh, fish the Okana, fish the fall. Don't I come around, bruh? Mysterious object falling from the sky after a lightning strike. I'm about to make a salsa, look at this. Freaking onion see through, clear, look at that. Pull it up. Look at that, what the hell? Dude, some fake ass onion, look at that. Bro, that's weird. Is that fake or that's just an effect on the camera? But that do look kind of weird for it to be transparent like that. Weird. I say, don't touch that watermelon. Hold on, is that watermelon or is that steak? Look like you, instead of cutting that and just eating it, look like you need to throw that on the frying pan. This is not a freaking watermelon. Look at this. It has texture like meat. Can y'all see this? She wonder about the food that we eat, don't it? Watermelon looking like that? I wonder was it sitting for a long time or was it fresh from the store? Either way, it's still nasty. I've seen nothing like this before. Uh uh. Yeah, this apple has been in my refrigerator cut like this for over seven days. Originally, I cut the apple. I said um, I would come back later and eat the rest, you know, uh, 30 minutes later or whatever. But when I got back to eat it, it hadn't even browned at all at that time. So I said to myself, let me just test this and see how long it's going to take for this apple to brown. It looked like you can soak up a wet mess on the counter with that apple it looked like a sponge more than an apple but i had a couple apples with a little soft inside a little too much for my tasting like something ain't right about it so it has literally been in my refrigerator for seven days still hasn't really browned like old school apples um so we do know this one is definitely genetically modified I just want a, a real apple, man. You know, like the ones I used to eat when I was growing up. I can't find grapes with seeds. I can't find a watermelon with seeds. What, what, just, can I get an OG apple? Can I get an old school OG apple, please? And not this trash. Man, I bought these apples from Publix. I'm in Tampa, Florida, man. I bought these apples February 19th. Today is what? May 8th? May 8th, bro. You bitches still hard as hell. Y'all can see. Little to no, like, discoloration, bro. Like, what the fuck is this? This is not, this can't be real, bro. This shit got to be some GMO shit, bro. There's no way in fuck. Apples last three, four goddamn months. That's 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 just ridiculous, man. February nineteenth is when I bought these, y'all.
that's those survival apples. They like MRE packs. They last for like two or three years in case of emergency situations. I had got a juicer for my girl and I was, we was gonna do some juice and shit. But man, I'm scared to use any fruit from anywhere now. It's no way in hell these fruit last this damn long. Hmm? These fruit right here. It's no way in fuck. These are apples, green apples, bro. Y'all can see the little sign right there. Let me let y'all see. Any mobile device these days, it has cameras and sensors, and just like your phones and social media apps, it does facial recognition. Inside here Tesla's is three grams of shaped explosive. This is how it works. Elon is an inventor and a maverick entrepreneur, one of America's youngest billionaires. Did you see that? That little bang is enough to penetrate the skull and destroy the contents. Get ready to witness the ultimate fusion of technology and humanity at the AI for Good Summit. Join me as I chat with brilliant scientists and experts about how AI can shape a better future for all. Don't miss out on this epic event where innovation meets compassion. Stay tuned for all the exciting updates. This isn't funny, I don't have pants on and I'm trapped on the toilet. Get the spider! Where'd he go? Oh my god. Oh shit. Can you stop recording and just kill it? Crush that spider. Ah, get oh it! Oh my god. Why did I would have been out of there. Man, what kind of albino hybrid type creature is that? Have you ever done something and it wasn't something you would not normally think of or do? Let me introduce US Patent 6506148B2. The manipulation of the nervous system through EMF from monitors released publicly in 2001. In simple terms, this patent details the use of any screen to influence and make people do things that they otherwise normally wouldn't do, make enough bad decisions, and it degrades the mental capacity to resist bad thoughts, disease, etc. Here's an article from the Scientific American about mind control by cell phone released in 2008. Some short excerpts from this explains that they did tests involving a Nokia 6110 and 6310 cell phone that keep in mind was released in 1998 and 2001 respectively, or about 25 years ago from today. And these tests were done 15 years ago. Imagine what the tech can do today. Quote, not only could the cell phone signals alter a person's behavior during the call, the effects of the disruptive brainwave patterns continued long after the phone was switched off, unquote. Given that manufacturers do include warning brochures, it's nice to keep in mind what te the tech may do to you subconsciously when interfacing with such detrimental devices. It makes you wonder how in today's age you can just think or talk about something you were going to buy and then all of a sudden you see an ad. 2021 survey for the future of marketing, 75% of the marketing firms said that they plan on deploying dream advertising technology by 2025, which would mean yes, they plan on advertising to you while you're sleeping. Dream hacking is exactly what it sounds like, where technology is used to control what someone is dreaming about while they're asleep. This all started in 2021 when Molson course conducted with Man, controlling what you dream about, that's crazy right there. I wouldn't be surprised they already implementing that technology now. Some of y'all think y'all be having some of the craziest dreams. Meanwhile, the nature dreams. They called the world's largest dream study, and in exchange for free beer, users participated in a targeted dream incubation project aiming to pair Coors beer images with positive associations in their minds, which actually caused a team of 38 experts in the field of sleep and dreaming to write an opinion piece warning that dream advertising was on the way. Now, dream hacking is actually something that we can already do, and a few years ago, a team from MIT created the Dormio Dream Incubator, which is a digital device with three sensors that waits until you You've reached the hypnagogic state of sleep and it hits you with auditory stimulations with the aim of altering your dreams. Now, there are also a lot of benefits for dream hacking, especially in the realm of therapy, creativity, and education, but scientists are demanding for new protective policies in the world of dreaming. So if you're a target, there's virtually nothing you can do. I can disrupt an individual from the level of their cell to their system and disrupt individuals on a variety of levels 
from individuals all the way up to the social fabric. Target a specific individual, change or eliminate that individual with very little attribution and trace, and be able to leave prior to any attribution. Who here actually feels like they are under surveillance pretty regularly? Everyone occupies, no? Everyone inside of Occupy. How many people here have been arrested and had their, at their court date, they had their phone taken into the back room? How many people here had their retina scanned? Wow. If you're targeting demonstrators, you, you make them suicidally depressed. Uh, and they, they're not, they don't care about demonstrating anymore because they're too upset. With one pulse frequency, you can just make people so suicidal, they can't be bothered to act like a demonstrator anymore. All they want to do is sleep or lay in bed all day. There's an infrastructure in place. This way! See, I don't really believe that right there. Because if these UFOs came from somewhere else and using a different kind of gas or different kind of energy for their propulsion, when they blow up, it wouldn't look like a gas explosion, if you understand what I'm saying. Bro, are you guys aware as of 2024, China has literally been getting cataclysms almost every single day? Like, things are literally changing for the worse in China, y'all. Check this out. China. In China, climate disasters are now occurring almost daily. On the afternoon of May 30th, the weather in Beijing changed suddenly within seconds. Residents of China's capital shared on social media that the sky darkened instantly, followed by a thunderstorm and hurricane-force winds exceeding 37 m per s. Large trees were uprooted, with many falling on cars and blocking roads. Piles and shingles fell from buildings onto pedestrians. Powerful gusts of wind knocked people off their feet, and industrial climbers were caught off guard, left swinging at great heights. I'm telling y'all, man, we fighting a war, but this with the weather and other ways. Miraculously, they managed to descend safely. <laughs> On June 1st, Typhoon Malixi struck the coast of Guangdong province nearly a month earlier than usual. In Guangxi province, the highest level of danger was declared due to torrential rains that began on June 2nd in Fengshan County, causing widespread flooding. Floods have affected many regions of the country. As of June 5th, water levels in 37 rivers across the country exceeded critical levels, in some places by more than 2 meters. I mean, who in their right mind signs up to do this type of job? That's crazy. And then did you see the way that the cars are floating, y'all? They're literally ice cubes in this water. They're like ice. Oh my goodness. If you know anyone that sleepwalk, you should try to get some spiritual protection for them real fast. When people are sleepwalking, that means a spirit got inside of that person's body and it took it over. It's been so many stories of people speaking about how they can't go to sleep because it feels like something is watching them. Well, they're not lying. It really is a spirit that watches when we sleep. Once we go to bed, we travel back into the astral realms. And if you don't have no kind of protection around your bed before you go to sleep, another spirit can hijack your body. Our body is a vessel. And operates just like a vehicle if you don't have no kind of protection someone can hijack it and joy ride inside of your body we hear about spiritual demonic possessions a lot and once this happened a preacher had to come out and throw holy water on your body to get out the spirit but no one ever speak about sleepwalking sleepwalking means there's a spirit inside of your body not just any spirit but a demonic spirit we have a physical body and a spiritual body every time we go to sleep our spirit leave our body but it's still attached to the spiritual cord when we go to sleep we are going into a deep spell remember the english language is spells and curses 
Why do you think sleep and spell is almost spelled the same? That's because sleep is another form of hypnosis. But so many people get stuck in the astral world. They are not able to protect their physical body while they travel in the spiritual realms. I find it real funny. Anytime someone sleepwalk, they walk like this. Don't zombies walk like that? Every time they show a zombie, he is walking with his arms out just like when you sleepwalk. This is demonic possession. In order to stop these spirits from taking your body when you go to sleep, you had to remove all kind of portals from your house and your bedroom. Soul Cancer is the, what we, I think, is the uh, six mile high uh, tower in the middle of Sinus Medi, right in the middle of the uh, center of the moon, if you look at the moon. And uh, the famous photo that Richard found, uh, Lunar Orbiter 384M, shows that huge tower. He also has two other photographs that, uh, that show that tower. Uh, I think that tower is um, what I call the soul catcher. When you uh, die, your soul is the ghost of the soul catcher. There are several uh, soul uh, transmission stations, both on Earth and on the moon, and depending on where you're going in your next lifetime uh, is which transmission station uh, takes over appears when people are having these NDEs and they go into the light or God's appearing or whatever, however they're trying to lure the soul back, it very much appears that they are using this false white light energy frequency. So the people that are experiencing the NDEs are feeling just an absolute sense of bliss and love and connection and everything that I've just mentioned. And this seems to be a really strong way that they hook people back in like fish. Living in these human bodies, we're, we're very much detached from all of that. Whether or not we were put here by design or, or what have you, it, it's hard to feel those things. And it appears that this soul trap system, this AI God that I think is behind everything, uses this false white light grid energy to give people. How do celebrities really sell their soul to the devil? Now the celebrities are getting exposed left and right for who they truly are and the evil, evil deeds they do. Not all of them were born evil. Unfortunately, they were corrupted by the industry. And selling your soul to the devil is something that the industry does to artists constantly, except it's not actually the devil. It's demons, it's entities from other worlds, other dimensions that get to possess the artist's avatar or body and have the artist do things that they normally wouldn't do. So what these big name industries do is that they fully understand the occult. They fully understand magic. They fully understand energy work. And they understand that there are otherworldly entities that want to access Earth to feed off of humanity's energy. And in turn, these entities will give the industry and the artists equal energy exchange. For example, let's say I'm a demon and I want this upcoming artist to sign a soul contract with me so that I can possess their body and feed off the energy of humanity. But in return, I will give you all the fame and fortune and attention you've ever wanted. Why is it that certain songs almost hypnotize people? Is it the best song you've ever heard? No, it's very generic. We can think of an artist right now whose music sounds incredibly generic, yet she is the most famous singer it's because these songs have energetic signatures and spell work in them. Why do you think it's called spell work? You need to spell something out, like a word, for it to have impact. This is why words carry frequency and energy. A lot of these big name artists, they will have humanity in a trance because there is this demonic entity that is working through them first and foremost, but also their music. See, I think if they was moving like that they wouldn't know it i think whatever taking control of them will be operating on the level inside of them if they're not aware so if they was carrying out these rituals or putting out these subliminals i think they'd be doing it subconsciously and wouldn't even know what's going on music is bound by spell work and when masses of people give all their attention to this one artist it creates a loose farm it's the most intense energy ever concerts are an energy ritual and these demonic entities they love it they feed off of it they survive off of it without your energy they will die which is why they are so desperate to get to our realm 
They exist in what you call phantom matrix or what the Bible calls hell. Phantom matrix is full of entities, hyperdimensional entities, demons, whatever you want to call them, who do not have a life force spark. They are parasitic. They need to attach themselves to something to feed off of its energy. And these poor artists, because they're so desperate for fame and fortune, they will sign their autonomy away to these entities. And if you notice, a lot of these artists, as they get older, as they rise in fame, the light in their eyes just continuously, continuously disappear. It's because they're not fully there anymore. Something else is home. Now these entities, these demons from Phantom Matrix, they, like I said, are parasitic. They have somehow run the show on Earth for a long, long time. At this point, because humanity is starting to wake up, they're getting very desperate for energy. So be warned of what media you consume and what music you consume. Now, if you wish to dive deeper into the concept... The wheels within wheels aren't angels. They're a living part of a craft that is a throne that have cherubim in it, along with God. So the Lord is a fire from the waist down and a bright amber appearance from the waist up being. The wheels are next to the cherub. Four wheel beings and four cherubim make up one throne. Thrones are alive and infused with the spirit of the cherubim like sync technology. Domes within domes, firmament above the head of the cherubim. A form of hands under their wings, so not a hand. Coals of fire within the wheels, fire from amongst the cherubs that they handle with their hands. Wings control the movement of this living craft that has thought controlled movement. Then there's eyes all over everything, wheels, rims, wings, and they can take the form of a man. That's just the intro, Ezekiel 10 is fire crazy. Learn a lot in a short time by paying attention to some key details that I'm going to show you from Ezekiel 10, a little before and after, which you always want to do to get the context, and a little bit from Ezekiel 1, then we're out. Could you face an angel taking you by a lock of your hair and teleporting somewhere between heaven and earth? Well, that's where we find Ezekiel. He's chilling in his house worshiping when this fire amber being, who's the Lord, takes him on this journey. Somewhere between heaven and earth, he talks about the firmament above the head of the cherubim. Repeatedly, we'll be coming back to that. He also mentions the throne of sapphire video plug on my page about God's throne. Let's jump right into the text with some key details I'm going to point out. In verse 5 you discover the cherubim's wings make noise, a lot of noise. The wings sound like many waters, like the tumultuous noise of an army, and like the voice of God Almighty. Cross-referencing this also with chapter 1. Verse 6 you see the mysterious coals of fire and fire from amongst the wheels and amongst the cherubim. Let's read verses 8 through 14. The cherubim appear to have the form of a man's hand under their wings. Form of a man's hand? And when I looked, there were four wheels by the cherubim, one wheel by one cherub, and another wheel by each other cherub. The wheels appeared to have the color of barrel stone. As far as their appearance, they all looked alike, as if they were a wheel within a wheel. Some artist depictions of these wheels within wheels, some will be more accurate than others. When they went in any direction, they did not turn aside when they went, but followed in the direction the head was facing. Verses 11 through 13 describe how they move and how it would be very unconventional for modern aircrafts, completely higher technology, and how they move at the speed of thought. Wherever they think they want to go, they go. As for the wheels, in my hearing, they were called wheel, which is the Hebrew word galal. Check it out. Galal means wheel, whirl, whirlwind, which is very interesting. We'll be coming back to that. And war chariot, God's Merkaba, which we've told you. Even the prophet Daniel saw the same thing. Check out his usage of the terminology, wheels, thrones, fiery flame. Talks about the four faces, the lion, eagle, ox, and man, which each one have. And wherever it goes, you're seeing each of the four faces from whatever angle you're looking at. Also from all of these descriptions, you can see how there's a wheel underneath each cherubim. Four wheels and four cherubim comprise and make up a throne. Multiple times it says the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. This is like synced up neuro-spiritual technology. Oh yeah, and the cherubim have hooved calf's feet, and they sparkle like furnished bronze. And this appearance of the form of the Lord, that's fire from the waist down, and amber brightness from the waist up, is referenced as the glory of the Lord. Also, you see constant references to fire, amber, coals of fire, fire, bronze, and beryl. References in chapter 1, the living creatures, the appearance was like burning coals of fire, or the appearances of like torches going back and forth from amongst the living creatures. Bright fire and lightning flashes. Wherever the spirit wanted to go, it went, because the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. Finally, at the end of chapter 1, there's a lot more references to the sapphire throne and lots of firmament weirdness, layers of firmaments, where it talks about firmament above the cherubim's heads. 
There's either layers of firmaments, domes within domes, or God's Merkaba has its own firmament. The special technological throne with four wheels and four cherubim that God rides on with the appearance of fire from the waist down and bright amber from the waist up where there's flashes of lightning going on where it's a whirlwheel, whirlwind appearance coming down that possibly has its own firmament. It's fascinating. Ezekiel's fire, lots of other fascinating rabbit holes and gems like the mark of God, which is a seal that he put on people that served him that he had an angel put on. See the same mark of God replayed in Revelation where the locust army from Revelation 9 in the bottomless pit only attacked the people that don't have the mark and the seal of God. In Ezekiel, God has an angel with an ink horn put the mark on people and angels with battle axes take care of those who don't. Which is a frequent theme you'll see in the society of heaven. There's tasks, there's orders. They have to complete tasks, report back, and do things. It's a total society. Also, God's problem was that there was so much sin and sin in secret, especially with Israel's leaders, and they were actually worshiping other gods and doing rituals and worshiping other gods in secret. Pretty sorry. Also, the common people were in a state where they thought God had just abandoned them and wasn't paying any attention to them and wasn't watching. So they would frequently say, God's abandoned us. Who cares? Let's just do whatever while getting darker and darker on the inside in the spiritual climate. I think a lot of us can relate to that today. I get it. But hold on. Also, more gems coming in the future, like Ezekiel's mysterious soul eaters. Soul hunters with magical charms that apparently are real. Trapping soul Shang Tsung style. Enclosed, Ezekiel was taken to heaven in a chariot. A fiery chariot. Swing low, sweet chariot. Could it all be the same thing? The wheel. The world. The exodus pillar of fire. Was it the same as the whirlwind in Job? Are all of these things the same thing? Check out one more really interesting verse at the beginning of Ezekiel 1. Then I looked and behold a whirlwind was coming out of the north, a great cloud with a raging fire engulfing itself, and brightness was all around it, and radiating out of its midst like the color of amber out of the midst of fire. Also from within came the likeness of the four living creatures. This whirlwind, God's Merkaba, this chariot, this wheel whirl, combined throne creature is the same thing. Pretty fascinating deep dive. Also, God answered Elijah with fire from heaven. God's got a lot of fire. Could all this be related to the mysterious orange orbs I captured in footage and did an episode about recently, the invasion of the orange orbs? Could be. Speaking of Job, he never really got an answer. He just needed God to show up. And as soon as God showed up, and he had that reminder of who God was, that was all he needed. To that fiery chariot comes to get you, don't get Mandela affected or frequency warfare out of your faith. You never know who's watching or who might show up one day to grab you by the lock of your hair.